Guys, I am so freaking jealous right now. I'm so freaking jealous because there are all these Web3 developers who are making so much money and I'm not. I'm talking of smart contract auditors. And today is the day that I decided to take a stand and say no more. Because me too, I'm getting into smart contract audit thanks to ChatGPT. So what is a smart contract audit? First, you have to understand the concept of smart contracts. So smart contracts are small programs that are deployed on blockchain, like Ethereum or Polygon. And what makes this program so special is that they manipulate a lot of money and also their code cannot be changed once it's deployed. So this has some advantages, but it can also be very dangerous because if a hacker finds any security vulnerability, it's not possible to do anything. You just watch the hacker takes all the money and there was a lot of smart contract hack that happened in the past. In 2022 alone, more than $3 billion were stolen in smart contract hacks. So how can we stop this with a smart contract audit? Smart contract security is a really big deal and it's very important to make sure that the code has no bugs before deploying it on a blockchain. And this is why smart contract audit is so important. When a developer writes a smart contract, they will write tests to make sure that their smart contract contains no bug. But unfortunately, it's not enough because if you really want to be confident that there is no bug, it's highly recommended to do what we call a smart contract audit. A smart contract audit is when an external developer look at the code of a smart contract. The auditor cannot be the developer who initially created the smart contract. And that's because for smart contract, like in life, it's very difficult to see your own mistakes. Oh, that was so deep. Companies pay a lot of money for smart contract audit. That's why smart contract auditors can make so much money. I'm talking of salaries going up to $300,000 or $400,000 per year. Up to now, the big problem with smart contract audit was that to be a smart contract auditor, the barrier to entry was very high. You needed to be hired by what we call an auditing firm to do smart contract audit. An auditing firm is a company that sells auditing services to Web3 projects. For a long time, these companies were the gatekeepers. If you wanted to do any kind of auditing work, you have to be hired by one of these companies. I'm talking of companies like Certic or OpenZipNIC. And typically, you needed to be a senior security specialist to be hired by these companies. But recently, everything changed thanks to a new type of audit called competitive auditing. With competitive auditing, instead of hiring a single company to do a smart contract audit, companies in need of an audit organize a bug bounty contest. Anybody can participate in this contest. And if you find a bug, you get paid the bounty. Bug bounties can go from $1,000 to literally millions of dollars. And there are bounty hunters out there that make six figures in a single month. This space is super hot right now. And at this time, I really believe this is one of the best opportunities for Web3 developers and we need to find a way to join the party. But what if we could use ChatGPT? With AI and ChatGPT, everybody can become super smart and ChatGPT is pretty good with coding. It can create code and it can also understand code, including Solidity, the programming language for smart contract, and it also understands smart contract security. And I have ChatGPT Plus, which gives me access to ChatGPT 4, which is even smarter than ChatGPT 3.5. Look, I have no idea how well it's gonna go, but I think we have to try this. Let's use ChatGPT to win a bug bounty. The first step is to find a bug bounty contest. There are a couple of websites for that, and there are two names that I heard many times, ImmuneFi and code for rena So I picked code for rena and since I want to use ChatGPT, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to explain how code for Rena works and it summarizes it pretty well. So very simply, you have sponsors that create contests 
where they offer a bug bounty, bounty hunters try to find vulnerabilities in this contest and judge from code for Rina, evaluate these findings and decide to give the bug bounties or not. So the next step is to pick a context on code for Rina. So I checked out the list of open contests on the website and unfortunately at this time there were only two. The first one has a bigger bug bounty so I was tempted to go with this one. However I also thought that it's not just about the bug bounty but it's also about the probability of finding a bug because I would rather have a high chance of getting a lower bounty compared to a no chance to get a huge bounty. So I read the description of the first project, but I realized it was pretty complex. It's what we call a restaking project. So in Ethereum 2.0, the network participants will secure the network by locking some Ether into the network. It's called staking. But when you stake your Ether, it's locked. You can't use it anymore. So with restaking, you can still leverage your locked Ether by using it as a collateral that you can use to borrow more money in other protocols. Obviously, it's not something for beginners. This is really advanced. And this is really not a good fit for my first bug bounty. So I'm not going to do that one. So instead, we are going to pick the other option, the Ashna protocol. I've never heard of this protocol, but what matters is that it's a lending project. So a lending protocol allows you to borrow and lend tokens in a decentralized way. It looks way easier than the other one and the total price pool is 60k so it's still a very good upside. So we're gonna go with this one. So when I first tried to find a bug for this project I did a very noob mistake because I went directly to the github page of the project and I started to explore the smart contract there. But you don't want to do this for two reasons. First, what you see on GitHub is just the latest version of the code and it's not necessarily the version that is considered for the contest. And second, for the bug bounty contest, not all smart contracts are in scope. That means that you might waste your time on wrong contract. So what you need to do is to go on the page of the contest on code for Rina and you want to find a section that says scope these are the smart contracts that are considered for the context and they will take you to the correct version of the contract. So here I want to be as lazy as possible. I want to let ChatGPT do most of the work. So my plan is very simple. I will just ask ChatGPT to audit all the smart contracts that are in scope. So let's see if it works. So I started with the first smart contract in the list and I asked this question to ChatGPT and it didn't work because ChatGPT doesn't have the ability to browse the web in real time. What we need to do is copy paste the code. So I tried again by doing just that and this time ChatGPT said something but it didn't find any vulnerability so I tried again with ChatGPT4 because I've subscribed to ChatGPT Plus so let's see if ChatGPT4 is smarter but it didn't change anything, it still didn't find anything. Then I went back to the contest in code for Rina. I opened the code for the second contract. I copy pasted it in ChatGPT and asked it to find the bug there. And this time I run into another issue. Basically, the input size is too big. So I couldn't find the exact info anywhere, but apparently ChatGPT has an informal limit between 500 to 1000 words for the input that you can provide it. So I try to remove as much code as possible from this smart contract and what I remove were all the external functions. So external functions are functions that can be only called from outside of the smart contract. They are read-only, so usually you won't find any interesting bug there and they are not used inside the smart contract by other functions. So in theory, it should be fine to remove them, but it was still too long. So I gave up for this smart contract and I went back to the list of contract in code for Rina. And unfortunately, all the remaining contracts are also too big for ChatGPT. Conclusion, it didn't work. I didn't find any bug with ChatGPT. But looking back, I don't think it was realistic to expect ChatGPT to directly find a bug and win a bug bounty. It would be too easy. However, we did learn something important. Instead of seeing ChatGPT as a magical tool that will do all the work for you, you have to see it as an assistant. Even though it didn't find any security vulnerability, it made some interesting remarks. It pointed us 
in some interesting direction. And then it's up to you to do more research to find a security bug yourself, or you can ask a better question to ChatGPT. And we also learned that ChatGPT is a great way to understand a code base and learn solidity. ChatGPT is also very good to find pattern in the code and teach you these patterns. So I haven't said my last word with smart contract audit. I'm sure that I will find a bug bounty with ChatGPT. I just need to try harder. And if you are new to this space and you are interested in smart contract security, the first step is to learn Solidity and Web3 development. And for that, you can check out my free Web3 masterclass where I will give you a complete roadmap. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching. That's it for today.